Hi. Almost everyone watches me without a subscription. Please support my channel with a subscription. I try for you. Thank you. Story 1. My fiancé cheated on me while I was pregnant and continued to talk to the girl after I found out. I have been with my partner for over six years, and we now have a baby together. Over the last few months, he had made a uni friend. He went back to studying and talks to her almost daily or sometimes even multiple times a day. He told me about her and kept saying she was a lesbian, later found out this was a lie. Looking back it sounded like this was meant to be a smoke screen. When I was 38 weeks pregnant, I found out that he had booked a hotel room with his friend. He had lied and said he was going to work in, first ever, overnight shift. He had been talking about trying an overnight shift for a while and even asked me to make him food to take to work. How did I find out? He had left the hotel name on his computer which I happened to walk past earlier in the day but didn't pay any attention to because I thought he was thinking of surprising me for our anniversary which was something we had spoken about. When it hit me that he might have booked a hotel, I was curious so I looked up the name of the hotel later that night and it was a hotel with a shared bathroom so I knew it wasn't for us. I had been cheated on in the past and now I was even more worried. He left his computer on and was napping so I looked through his search history and saw booking confirmation and sent it to my email. It had her name on it. When I confronted him about the booking, he cooked up a story that he was just helping out a friend. I wasn't convinced because she was supposed to have a GF, family, or even other friends if she needed help getting away from anything. Why did he need to be the one booking a hotel for her when they had only known each other for a few months? I didn't have any proof to suggest otherwise and so I let it go but it was still in my mind. This was when I learned he had been deleting their messages so there was nothing to prove her asking him for help. Apparently he had been deleting entire chat logs with various girls throughout our relationship. He said it was because he got the vibe early on in our relationship that I'd get jealous of other girls but I had never gone through his phone or computer, otherwise I would have known what type of relationship I was in before getting pregnant many years later. A few days later. When we were watching TV, some random messages me on Insta saying that my fiancé had been unfaithful to me so I asked him about it and he said he didn't know why someone was trying to ruin his life. He was pacing up and down the house and was in tears repeating he didn't know why someone was doing this to him. I asked him to call the uni friend and pretend I wasn't around so I could hear the type of conversation they were having but he kept leading her, e.g. were just bantering or giving it away that I was in the room and she'd sound very superficial. So I replied to random and asked them for proof because I don't want to be caught in a game of he said she said. They sent through random screenshots of their chats including them sexting and him saying he'd pick her up to get to the hotel and her asking what she should wear that night. At first, he kept saying it was just banter and eventually he fessed up that it was the first time he'd done anything, i.e. booked a hotel, and insisted nothing physical had happened ever except the sexting. He kept saying he never cheated, only because I found the hotel booking the night before it was happening. After almost two weeks of an emotional roller coaster, I decided to put my baby first because I wasn't sleeping and barely eating. I said I'll pretend as though nothing had happened and we'll continue with our lives until about six to eight weeks after the baby was born and then I'd like him to move out. I was certain I needed help the first few weeks after birth. He cut ties with her and said he'd never delete chats or call logs or cheat on me again. He said he loves me and would kill himself if he lost us. It was a bit of a roller coaster, but the pretending after the baby was born helped us get through the day and we were starting to feel like a couple again. I do love him and I want my baby to have a dad around. I had told him I wouldn't ask him to move out anymore. Fast forward to now, my baby is 3 plus months old and I found out he had been having calls with this girl for the last 3 months. Only 3.5 weeks after I found out he booked a hotel room and it was less than 2 weeks since my baby was born, he had called her. At first he said that he called her to wish her happy new year and apologize what had happened but now I knew better to believe him so we looked at his phone records and it showed they had been talking the last three months. He deleted the MSGS and the call logs to hide it. He'd block her number and unblock it when I wasn't around and then reblock it when I was so I couldn't accidentally stumble across her texting or calling him. He insisted he had done nothing wrong and he was just talking to her. Now like what to do? He threatened to kill himself again and said he'd promise on his life that he would never do this again. He says he loves me and promised me all the same things he did when I found out he lied and was sexting another girl and even booked a hotel room with her. This time I went to a friend's and asked him to call her and end it and tell me about it after because there's no reason to hide it as I knew. 
I waited a week for things to come a litter before asking him to stay at his parents and here I am. Don't forget to subscribe, rate the video and click the bell. Do I ask him to leave permanently? How will I pay for the mortgage and bills etc alone and with a baby? Do I try to move forward and try to trust him? I'm not sure how long I'll feel paranoid for or if I'll ever full trust him, but I'm also worried he'd hurt himself. TLDR, my partner booked a hotel room with another girl when I was 38 weeks pregnant. So many lies were said even when I confronted him, but he promised he didn't physically cheat and wouldn't lie to me or delete MSGS slash call logs, but then reached out to her after a few weeks of no contact and had been deleting MSGS slash call logs again. I don't know what to do. Story 2 I am so sad I have to end a close family friendship because the husband chose to insult our family in our own home in front of our children. Sad face. I don't know where to start to give a complete picture of what just happened so I hope I can because this shit has shocked me to my core and my husband and I can't figure this whole fucking scenario out but a friend of ours, a close friend, married father of two completely disrespected us in our own home, continually in front both our own children and his family at a dinner we hosted. So it started off when they arrived, our family greeted their family at the door and then I excused myself to the kitchen to finish the children's pizzas and one other dish so we could sit down to eat as planned. My husband showed him around and he took the friend and his family with our children downstairs to the playroom so I could continue cooking and setting up without the kids running around and interrupting me and so we could eat on time. The friend came upstairs after a few minutes and started hanging around me in the kitchen which within minutes I found this to be very strange as I thought he would have stayed downstairs with everyone else and enjoyed the conversation and seeing the kids play together. No ear he is literally fixated on me. What I have been doing lately and following me around the kitchen distracting me and preventing me from getting dinner finished so we could all eat. He ignored his wife and children and proceeded to inquire rapidly about a multitude of personal topics in quick succession. What I had been up to over the holidays, about my language, my culture, my work. His tone of voice did not match that of someone who really wanted to know anything. It was of someone who was frustrated, who was frazzled and was not at ease. After 10 minutes of enduring this rapid fire inquiry and while our families came in and out of the kitchen, my husband abruptly interjects and asks me if we could focus on getting the food out which I truly appreciated him doing as it would hopefully give our friend the hint to back off and leave me alone. At this point I felt this as being unusual behavior from him that I had never seen before. It was not friendly at all it was like he was just firing questions because he was uncomfortable with just being in that moment and allowing me to just finish the food. We have known them for over two years and enjoyed their company many times, but this was the first time he had been to our home. I began to wonder what was his intention, why was he preventing me from getting it done so we can all sit and talk. I politely asked him to take a seat in the dining room, I will be out soon with the food. Then the assault continues at the table, he criticizes my husband's dishes he made, said my dishes on the table were better tasting which I found oddly rude. He then opens up a discussion about his child who is in earshot sitting at the other end of the table and how he is not smart like our child to which I defend and politely disagree that they are both smart. We discuss the local school system and compare the area we both live in and the expectations placed on our children. Both on the same points but he disagreeing yet we were on the same point. A total head fuck at this point in the night. His wife who barely said one sentence sits quietly beside him as he continues to indirectly offend us with comments such as you guys do too much and no one does as much as you guys do referring to us out and about as a family every weekend sightseeing or doing fun family activities which is normal for us as expats from another country we don't have any other family here so we enjoy our little family and that's our downtime. The real offense came when he started to inquire about our marriage and blaming me that my husband is tired and exhausted from his work that he may not want to do all these fun activities that he may want to do nothing. He proceeded to ask about why which catches me off guard and I respond with I was raised this way. My father was like this with us. He exposed us to as much as possible firstly for our own benefit in knowing how to do something and secondly for knowing how to enjoy ourselves. Everything I said he disagreed with. I began to feel attacked targeted, cornered and violated as he continued his interrogation and then I burst into tears I was feeling hurt, overpowered, controlled and I couldn't understand why he was feeling so strongly about me being myself. My husband stepped in to protect me and I told him it's okay to prevent a physical altercation from occurring. My young daughter looks across the table at me and with a look of complete anger toward our supposed friends and sympathy for me mouths the words are you okay? 
which breaks my heart into pieces that she was witnessing this interaction take place and her mother, unable to stand up for herself, was uncontrollably crying all over the place. The friend never once stopped or even noticed me upset he continued while his wife sat downcast in silence beside him. I said it's late, the children need to sleep and I removed myself from the firing line into the kitchen. This by the way way was five hours after they arrived. The adults got up and started clearing the table and I completely ignored them and checked out. I felt defenseless, confused and betrayed this had just happened. My heart hurt and I couldn't give him the satisfaction any further of him getting a reaction from me so I did not look at him or acknowledge him and focused on my children and preparing them to say goodbye to their friends and get ready for bed. I said goodbye as I wiped my uncontrollable tears away and felt a deep sadness as I knew in my heart this would probably be the last time our families would ever be together due to his intolerable and inappropriate actions. I considered them family. We had enjoyed a beautiful friendship up until that point. How on earth did we get here? Now two days on my heart is still hurt. My husband and I have heard from them thanking us and inviting us to their home in a few weeks but no mention of anything else. We cannot bring ourselves to respond without getting highly emotional, so we haven't. I am in complete shock and my husband is seething while my children want nothing to do with him anymore. It's like I'm mourning what we all had and I don't know how to let it go like my family have so quickly even though I am so hurt by it still. I feel like I need answers before I can be at peace. I've never been treated that way by a friend and I want to know why he did that and said all those hurtful things and why she a beautiful friend of mine sat by in silence. Don't forget to subscribe, rate the video, and click the bell. Story 3. Should I, 25F, rethink breaking up with my boyfriend, 30M, over my disability? Last night my boyfriend and I had the worst blow-up fight we have ever experienced over the course of our three-year relationship, and I need third-party advice on how to proceed. Normally, I would ask my friends and family, but I don't want them to make judgments based on their personal pity slash feelings for me. I have a disease that will slowly take over my body. I've had this since, presumably, birth, so it's not like this is my first rodeo. I don't want to mention exactly what disease it is, but know that it causes extreme deterioration of body tissue and parts, mobility issues, cognitive issues, extreme fatigue, and other health risks. Most people with this disease live happy, fulfilled lives that are supported by medication. I, however, got unlucky as the cheapest medication for treatment didn't work to stifle my disease, and thus I spent seven years essentially letting my body eat itself. I was unable to move on to new treatment due to my place of residence and the insurance I had, as other treatment options range from $200 to $1,800 per one shot or dose. My luck did change, however, when my boyfriend and I moved to a different place in the country. I had to wait another year to see my new specialist, but it was worth it. When I saw her, she immediately approved me for medical support, got me onto the meds that I needed, and told me that this was the worst case she has seen considering my age group. Because I was still mobile at that time, I did not go on disability. I was relieved and optimistic that I was finally getting help, and I did begin to feel better, health-wise. All this time, I had been going to university and working, but when I moved I dropped uni to take a break. I started to work March 4th time and take care of the house slash property that my boyfriend and I bought while he works full time. Being independent and self-reliant has always been extremely important to me, and despite my bad shape due to my disease, I definitely feel like I have pulled my weight in all aspects of my life. This, however, has changed when late last year my treatment stopped working. It was debilitating. I couldn't go to work, and haven't since December 1st, I could barely walk, I can't cook, clean, do the dishes, or really do anything that I normally would do or even enjoy doing. Every moment of my life feels like I'm wearing a lead jacket, and I'm in extreme pain. Sometimes even bringing a coffee cup to my mouth makes my hands shake so bad from pain slash weakness that I spill it all over myself. I am lucky enough that my boyfriend has helped me through this horrible time. He has picked up the slack fully and without any complaint. He essentially waits on me hand and foot, and I hate every second of it. I hate how useless I have become. I hate that I've caused us financial troubles because of my lack of working. 
I've even deceived my boyfriend about how I've been paying our bills. I told him that I had luckily paid extra on the bills back in October slash NOV because I was anticipating Christmas to be a financial strain. This isn't true. I had to reach out to my father to ask him to send me money from my uni fund to cover them. I even lied to my own father, telling him that I was planning on going back to uni soon and I may need the money for enrollment fees. I lied because I'm ashamed of how bad my body has gotten and how much of a burden I am on myself and others. I truly feel like I have no future and now I'm worried about my boyfriend's future too. My boyfriend wanted to stay open to the idea of having kids until we settled down in our new place some more, and he wanted to get married. He wanted to do a lot of things with me, but now that I'm looking at my position, I think he would be better off doing those things with someone else. I've been in and out of doctor's appointments this past month and a half, but all of them are unsure of how to help me. All they can do is prescribe me pain medication, write doctor's notes for work, and send letters to my specialist to hopefully have her see me sooner. My next appointment with her is in February. Yesterday, I got back from an appointment that my boyfriend drove me to. Driving has become too painful for me. The doctor was sympathetic, but ultimately unhelpful as he had limited experience in what he could offer. I burst into tears over it, and my boyfriend was consoling me. I don't know why I said it all of a sudden, but I told my boyfriend that I wanted to break up, and he was shocked. He immediately got angry and asked me why. I told him that I didn't think it was fair that he had to take care of a 25-year-old who was essentially as helpful and fun to be around as an infant. I then told him that he would be better off and much happier with someone else and that we should just split now before I deteriorate into a living corpse. He kept pushing back, and I finally told him that marriage and kids would be off the table now, and that he should go find someone else who can bring him those things. He said, how dare you think I value things that don't exist yet over you. And he left the conversation. Now I'm conflicted. I want to break up with him because, in my heart, I just feel like wasting away under a bridge somewhere and hoping I die an early death, but I also don't want to throw away the love, happiness, and friendship my boyfriend and I have together. We have a very strong relationship, at least we did, but I would absolutely sacrifice my own happiness and his temporary happiness for him to be more fulfilled in his life in the long run. My disease is not his burden to bear. He disagrees. Please help. TLDR, have a disease that has slowly rendered me useless to the point I want to break up with my boyfriend so that he can live happily with someone else. He disagrees. What should I do? Don't forget to subscribe, rate the video, and click the bell.